this and I forgot. I've started the recording now. Please go ahead, Vlad. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, well, general best practices uh, for this Google Seasonal Docs, and I'm not expecting that you know this since it is the first time for you as officer to handle this. What would be the best practice in terms of the scope of proposals? Uh, uh, is it better to go, do wide uh, 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 spectrum of themes that you want to cover as a uh, 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 well, participant in Google sees no docs, or it's better to focus on specific item and provide as much detail as possible? Because I noticed that several applicants right now uh, have very wide kind of area and most of the comments, as far as I understand, are related to trying to focus uh, the applicants on specific areas where they will contribute. Yeah, so, so at least for me, and now you really, you're, you're, you're gravely, you're, you've entered the seriously dangerous zone of Mark Waite's opinion. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I apologize for putting you in the zone of Mark Waite's opinion. That's, that's, a, that's a, a, a difficult zone to be in. Uh, I had assembled a, a, a sort of a checklist of ways that I was using to assess proposals. And that checklist I had assembled, it was a personal checklist for me, but it had things like more detail was better, um, at least for my view, was better than less because it, it helps me understand more clearly what the, what the technical writer is offering, what they're proposing. Um, the, the breadth, the width of the themes, the breadth was, was not, that's not one I would know how to guide on because, for example, um, Kubernetes is a very wide topic and yet it's also a very, very intensely valuable topic. Therefore, I like that a lot, but we also had proposals which said, hey, I would like to do migration of plugin documentation from Wiki to GitHub We've got about a thousand plugins still that need that migration. That's a much more narrow thing and yet also intensely valuable. So, so here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to waffle or be a little bit uh, ambiguous and say no, no strong opinion whether it should be wide or narrow. Uh, I've, I've seen good proposals in sort of both, both areas where very, very intensely focused or much broader brush. And, and good, but more detail was crucial for me and a timeline um, with um, identified prioritization has been, has been really helpful. So it's a good way of expressing, I think we should do this first, then this, then this. Uh, that helps me as a reviewer say, ah, they've thought enough about this thing to, to make a viable plan uh, we may then refine the plan during the during the time when we're actually executing. But the thought to create the plan helps people helps us as reviewers understand where you would like to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What are some other best? Oh, oh yes, uh, English, English grammar or English spelling and grammar matters. I know this may sound really, really, really strange, but we're we're looking at it. Uh, use the tools that are already in Google Docs. To help. I don't don't be shy if it suggests a grammar change in your Google Docs session, consider it. If it suggests a spelling change, no, none of us should be intimidated by thinking we need perfect English language because we're all, well, we're all working towards that. Me from my flawed Western United States, uh, others from different positions. Don't be shy about that, but submitting something with, with misspellings is awkward and an awkwardness that Google Docs can help you avoid. Uh, let's see. 
Meg, any other hints that you would offer in terms of as you're evaluating it? Meg has been a, a war marvelous reviewer of my writing for submissions and therefore <laughs> I'm willing to beg her coaching. <laughs> um, no, just, you know, the standard thing to keep your syntax simple. Don't try to do really, really complicated phrases thinking it makes you sound better. Most hmm. technical writers don't do that. Non-writers do it. Right. Good. Active voice generally better than passive voice, with exception. That's right. Well, and okay, my stuff. my my favorite one: avoid phrasal verbs. Yeah. You don't need to use the phrasing "get up," "get over," "get down," "get through." <laughs> there are so many so many terrible things we do in the english language with um with phrasal verbs uh, i don't know that anybody else cares as much about it as i do about this one but this one has surprised me more than once as i try to speak in italian sometimes oh how do i express this terrible phrasal verb in english it's two or three words strung together to make a single verb mm -hmm. And again, none of those are blockers, all right? That's, that's why we have a code review process. None of the, uh, you know, the, the, the spelling or grammar things will block progress. We detect some of those in, in, doc, in code review. And all of us constantly make grammatical and spelling errors that other people catch on review. Right. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or topics? Mark, what's under the follow-up to the June 29th questions? Did we do that? Oh, we, we have not. We certainly Oh, can. we're still no. going on. I'm sorry. Never mind. No, no, but that's a good question. We, we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, are there any other questions on Google Season of Docs? If not, we'll go on to, to other topics. Okay, let's, let's take that. Good suggestion, Meg. Let's look at follow-up to June 29 questions. So what we had was a series of questions that were asked a week ago today um, in our session then and Oleg Ninashev and I went through during an office hours last Friday morning and tried to provide answers inside the document. And so what we we started with this question, can an inexperienced technical writer be part of Google Season of Docs? And we framed it as two different forms of non-experience. If you have no Jenkins experience, this is pretty much expected. And it's not a problem. That's just fine. A technical writing writer without Jenkins experience would be exactly the kind of person we would expect to find in this. And that's what Google Season of Docs is trying to encourage. Now, a person who is a, who is coming to Google Season of Docs with no technical writing experience, that's not typical because Google Season of Docs is focused on experienced writers who are interested in starting their work in open source. That's not not to say that this would be a blocker, just rather that that's less typical. Okay, then we had a question on stat, project proposal reviews. All reviews are now complete. We completed those before end of last week. If you have a proposal and it does not have any comment from me on it, that means somehow I did not see your proposal. And, and then you need to get get that link to me as quickly as you can so that I can give you my review comments as soon as possible. Let's see, so we had a question on a long running project. So, and this was a good one because Google Season of Docs has two concepts, an, a standard duration project, which is 10 weeks, uh, middle of September through end of December. 
or a long running project, project which runs six months. Um, long running projects have a little more flexibility, a little, are a little more relaxed. The 10 week projects have, are, do a little more intense work in that 10 week period. And the decision on whether it should be a long running project or not is yours to make in the proposal. That's not something that we'll make for you. If you say, hey, I would prefer to do this as a long running project, Say that in the proposal and include it in your timeline for the proposal. Um, our bias, our assumption will be if your timeline tells us it's going to be a 10 week project, we take it, it's a 10 week project, not a long running project. Then the question was, are there any shortcomings for long running projects in the context of Google season of docs, any special risks, risks or benefits and Okay, this was, these were just advice on general attributes of longer running projects in any context, any software development project, construction project, whatever. Uh, they tend to miss schedules more, they tend to be harder to predict, and, but they can also deliver more value because there's more time to do the work. Um, in terms of Jenkins and Google Season of Docs, we didn't see any practical difference it is an option that's available to you as a writer to propose either long running or standard length. And we're ready to support both, both types, whichever one you prefer. So the question was, can a project proposal specify the alternatives as a regular as a long run engine? It is expected that you will. Any questions there with regard to long running projects, Prakar or Vlad, either of you? Uh, no, it's clear. Okay. Just I wanted to clarify, Mark. We need to make decisions, we as applicants, about the length of the project before our submission date of the proposal. That is, other, that is correct. In other words, it would not be possible to change the duration of the project uh, during later, basically. Uh, that's a good question and that's a that's a that's a good question leads into the next topic which was what if things change during the project itself right and i would expect that if if the if something catastrophic happened in the in the for the selected technical technical writer that they said i had proposed long running i need to change that would probably require that we negotiate with google inform them, inform the organization admins that we were doing that kind of structural change to the project. Uh, I, would, I would guess it's possible uh, because I don't think that there's any strong attachment. You must do a long running project if you said you were going to do a long running project, but that would absolutely invoke the organization admins. We would have to have their involvement. We would mm -hmm. prefer not to do that. But if, mm -hmm. if for instance, you contracted COVID-19 and said, I have to take two weeks off to, to, get, to get healthy again, and that will change completely the scope of my project, then we would probably negotiate and start those discussions with Google. Mm -hmm. uh, what so, if I got into the writing and discovered you know, some hidden little trap there? that was a whole bunch of extra work that had to be done in order to successfully do what I'd planned to do. So then, then I think the answer is, so if we can fit it within the scope it is, even if it's by reducing the work that we, we accomplish, we just handle that inside the project team. So okay. this is minor changes, changes to scope and whatnot. Um, we just do it inside the project team. If we're doing something where we say, hey, I thought I could do this and I can only do 10% of that, that we at least notify the org admins because then the org admins know, all right, we've got a bigger change here. Uh, as far as Oleg and I could tell, the only time we have to formally notify Google is if the, if the writer has something so catastrophic that they have to abandon the project. And then we would inform Google because we, we don't want to mistreat Google's funding of these these 50 people that are doing technical writing for open source projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And I think, oh, then we had one more question, which was, could a technical writer act as a mentor if they were not accepted as a writer? And I thought that was a keen question, a very interesting question. If you have Jenkins knowledge, that's the key attribute for a, a, ment for a mentor. They need to know Jenkins. If you have Jenkins knowledge, then that would be great. You could also act as a mentor. Applicants could become mentors if so long as you know Jenkins. Uh, that would that would be quite a surprise, but I guess I can give you the, the the experience we've had with Google Summer of Code. We've got mentors this year who were students last year, and it's it's working great. I love the what our mentors are doing, and and their experience as a as on the other side of the equation last year has helped them as they help new participants. All right, any, any other questions or concerns there? So we did have this up this mentor meeting. Oops, where'd I go? Fat fingers, sorry. I did, we did host the mentor meeting. There it was this thing. And in that mentor meeting, we reviewed what I had done is I assembled a document that included hyperlinks to every one of the proposals. And that document is actually a public document. Would it help you if I, if I show it here? Uh, we intentionally made it a public document so that people could see some of the things that, that we had, that I had thought about. So let's see, Google season of docs. Uh, now I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can look for it because I, I had a private one where I was making my own personal notes that I'm not really willing to share, but I've got a public copy where it's, it just talks about the kinds of things that I was doing to review. So hang on just a minute while I stop my screen sharing, find that document and I will bring it up. Let's see. Oh, I know why I couldn't find it. I was in the wrong terminal. I was in the wrong uh, Chrome session. Here we go. And it's right here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put that link back into the original Docs Office Hours nodes. so that if you want to, you're welcome to review this. Uh, you should not consider this authoritative. These were my notes, but I liked having the links all in one place to everyone's, everyone's proposals. Okay, so notes on proposals and uh, possible evaluation criteria. There it is, and now let's click through the link to be sure it actually, so this is, yeah, okay, good. So here we go. So this was mentor notes, and it captured who are the candidates. And so we've got six or eight different candidates from various locations, links to their proposals, and I put them in order in which I had received them. So there is not not anything that should be inferred by the order of the links list there. That's the order that I detected them as I was reading through messages. And then the, the evaluation criteria were here. Let's see. And is there Do you know we way? can't see your screen? Oh, I'm not sharing. Oh, sorry. It's secret. That's no, I, didn't I, mean well, I was looking for a link and you weren't sharing that. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, so the link is there. I thought I had shared, obviously not. Okay. So here's the, uh, Here's the page. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. I'm talking like you could read what I'm writing and uh, you can't. Okay, so these are mentor notes that I took during the mentors meeting and things that I had prepared while getting ready for that meeting. Uh, it includes a link to all the project proposals uh, that I've seen so far. 
So let's double check. Prakar, yours is here. Vlad, yours is here. Yes. So, and then the evaluation criteria, these were things that, that I had thought of as I was going through the evaluation process, reading those, and they're just different topics. I, I can't claim that anyone else is using these same criteria or thinking about these things, but these were things that came to my mind. This was one that we had some that didn't didn't seem to have a very strong timeline. So we tried to guide towards getting a timeline with specific things broken down. Um, and we were working to get more people as as candidate mentors was a good one for our mentor meeting. Any questions on that topic? All right. Just mark in general, uh, in case if somebody uh, from uh, applicants would like to get a link to this document which you prepared, is there any simple way of doing this or finding this? There is. It's in the, I just linked it into the office hours document. Oh, Let great. me get okay. this thing back down to normal size. So this office hours document let's see let's put that into our notes or this week as well there we go yeah thank you yeah that way it's it's there it really when i met with with oleg and with kristen um, it was specifically noted that I'm, I'm making this document publicly visible so we don't put anything that's sensitive in there. We don't put any comments about specific proposals. Typically, the specific proposal comments will be inside the Google Doc that the, the person who's making the submission has sent us the link. Any other questions? Um, uh, I think these are the last five minutes left before the 9th of July last meeting. So is there any final piece of advice for applicants uh, which they could follow as a final piece of advice? Um, I think be sure that you've re reviewed and responded to re resolved comments that were made on your proposal. That's that's. If, if I made a comment on a proposal and it was ignored, that probably wouldn't be viewed very positively. <laughs> so so that's, that's one just as guidance. Then the other is um, be sure that you're in on time. That, that one is the most awkward of any to have to tell someone, oh, oops, you missed the deadline. You're therefore not, not going to be considered at all. So much better to submit on the 8th, two days from now, rather than submitting, risking you that you submit late. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, then I think we're at a point where we could pause here. Now, we just had someone new join us. Um, and I'm going to mispronounce your name intentionally. Larry, are you doing okay? Do you have any questions? No, 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 Mark. I'm fine. All right. And, and could you pronounce your name for me? I know you go by Larry Sewell online, and I'm very yeah. grateful for that because that's something I can say. Yeah, Olang I'm serious Olang Rewaju. Great. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you for being part of the project. Now, I had not seen a proposal from you. Uh, I had the action item to reach out and contact you to ask you if you intended to submit a proposal. Yes, I do intend, but then 
I've been having um, mixed feelings about it, and I just wanted to take my time to learn more about the Jenkins and probably up to next year for when I have a much better understanding. I don't even know about my lines. I don't know <laughs> much about Jenkins as a whole. So I want to like use like one year and study the whole thing. Then I could now come back and say, okay, I'm fully um, grinded with what Jenkins is about and the whole foundation stuff. Great, thank you. That 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 helped me clarify. So you're if you're if you're not ready to submit an application, that's okay. That's great. Uh, and we're, we're delighted to have your contributions at any level. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Mike. All right, any other topics then before we conclude our meeting today? Just to clarify, Mark, so we need to wait for announcement probably from you or from Oleg about future meetings or office hours. I guess at the beginning of the meeting, you mentioned that uh, the board will try to incorporate office, hour, office hours inside DocSig, something like this. Oh, oh no, good, good question. So I should be more clear. The, that was just with regard to the, the where do we store the notes for these meetings we would like to continue holding office hours as long as there is interest in them. So this meeting will happen next Monday, just like usual. Uh, and I will happily continue holding these meetings until we reach a point where, uh, until there's a point where no one is, is choosing to come for, for help and discussion. Um, so this meeting will continue. And the only thing that will stop this meeting is if people stop coming. Thank you. Good, good question. So let me, I'm going to make a note of that one because that I'll, I'll also embed that into the, into the document itself because uh, notes for this meeting will be copied into the Google or not Google into the doc sig meeting notes document. links between the two and then we'll probably do future meeting notes in the DocSig meeting notes they're also public and therefore then then I only have to think about one document that I maintain whether I'm going to the DocSig meeting or to office hours good question thank you All right. I think I think we've hit the end of questions and we've pretty much covered an hour. So thanks very much for your contribution. My apologies for not having recorded the first 15 minutes. Um, the, the notes are accurate for the first 15 minutes where we didn't have a recording. I will post a link to the recording uh, in the YouTube channel for Jenkins under the documentation special interest group playlist. And I'll also embed a link to this meeting, to the video of these, this meeting in these notes so that we can refer to them. Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks, guys. Good luck with your proposals. Oh. Goodbye.